What's up guys? Welcome to Making Houston Home. My name is Rennie Lara. I'm the founder of Making Houston Home Real Estate. I appreciate y'all for joining me today. We're going to be giving you an updated version of my cost of living here in Houston. We are in January of 2023, starting off the new year. Um, so if you're thinking about moving to Houston, Texas, like I did back in 2018 from Southern California, I know you're probably thinking, well, what's the cost of living? How much house can I buy? How much is gas? How much? All the details that you don't know if you don't live here, right? So that's what I'm going to be doing for you right now. Let's go ahead and get into it. So again, I'm Rennie Lara. You know, I moved here from Southern California, from Orange County back in 2018 with my wife and two kids. So as we go through this, I'm going to be kind of referring back to that a lot to compare, you know, cost of goods and services and things here compared to what we were paying in California, which I'm sure since 2018 has gone up exponentially um, to what it is now. But, you know, just giving you my experience. So the first thing we're going to talk about, which is probably your biggest expense is going to be your home, right? So your mortgage, the average home price right now, sold home price in Houston is riding a ride about 400,000. So we had this big influx, you know, as the rest of the country did in 2021, 2022, went all the way up to like 428. It's kind of been trending back down and we're right around the 400,000 range. So as we talk about housing, um, I'm kind of just going to be using that as the average, that 400,000 number. So with that, you can get a home, a beautiful home, um, for around $400,000. And in different areas, you know, that's going to be roughly anywhere from 2,500 to 3,500 square foot home, you know, three to five bedroom, multiple bathrooms, good size yards, lots, maybe even a pool in some areas at that price range. Um, you're going to find a beautiful home in Houston at that $400,000 mark. The next thing with the mortgage and kind of one of the biggest things that was a shock for me coming from California is property taxes. So yes, the home values are a lot lower, but at the same time, your property taxes, the tax rate itself is much higher. So, you know, to speak to my experience, I lived in Rancho Mission Viejo, which was a brand new development. So we had a mellow ruse tax on top of our normal property taxes. We were paying about two and a half percent. But that two and a half percent was on an $800,000 home, right? So do the math real quick, over $16,000 tax bill every single year. So being in Houston now, and anywhere if you're closer to the city in Houston, you can find tax rates under 2%. You get further out into the suburbs, a lot of these newer developments, you're, you can see all the way up to just under 4%. So really important to keep that in mind when you're shopping, make sure Whoever you're working with, whether it's me or a different realtor, make sure you're asking those questions to find out what the tax rate is because that's going to directly impact your monthly liability to pay on your mortgage. So going back to my point, <laughs> um, you know, now I'm in Kingwood. We're about 2.6% here in Kingwood, which isn't much higher than what I was paying in California, but I'm paying that on, you know, let's use the average $400,000 home. So my tax liability actually got cut in half when you're talking about dollar amount. So although the taxes are higher, there's no state income tax. And then generally speaking, um, you're going to be paying that percentage on a much lower value than you would in, say, California or New York or one of these other big cities where prices are kind of just crazy, unless you want a million dollar home here in Houston, which a lot of people do and can afford. So that's a great option too. Um, you can find a million dollar home here and you're going to get exponentially more home and more property and more value. Your money's going to go a lot further here in Houston than it will somewhere else. You know, just again, if you're worried about taxes or that's one of your concerns, you know, make sure you're in a tax rate that you're comfortable paying in. So with taxes too, there's a lot that goes on in, in the whole tax realm, property taxes. But another thing to note that I didn't know when I moved here that is really important is the fact that your property taxes are reassessed annually by the county. So if property values are going up, which historically they have been trending up, as those values go up and it gets reassessed annually, your annual tax bill also goes up at the same time. So keep that in mind 
because you know you can get into home and what happens with a lot of people unfortunately especially people that are from houston that have lived here forever and it is kind of sad as values go up they actually end up getting priced out of where they live because they can't afford the taxes anymore end up having to sell and move somewhere else so keep that in mind as well it is what it is but it's just something to note and to keep um, at the forefront of your mind while you're shopping out here and while you're living here so with that the next thing on the mortgage is which was another shock to me uh, was homeowners insurance so homeowners insurance as you can imagine we are in kind of a severe weather atmosphere here with hurricanes and floodings and you know things that can happen here in Houston you know in California I think my annual um, homeowners insurance was around like 700 a year maybe even less than that I think we were paying like 60 bucks a month here though my homeowner's insurance now is right around $3,500 a month. So a huge difference there. And remember, I do have a lot more home. I have a pool. I have a lot more property here. So I have more to cover here. But it mainly just has to do with the weather and flooding and things like that. And another note, flood insurance is actually separate from your regular homeowner's insurance. So if you're moving here, you're going to get your homeowner's insurance. If you're in a floodplain, you're gonna get flood insurance if you're not in the floodplain you have the choice um, if you want to cover your home with flood insurance or not and usually flood insurance is around five hundred dollars a year so you're gonna add that to your regular homeowners insurance so keeping that in mind just to put it bluntly in my experience with my home you know our taxes and insurance are almost about half of what our mortgage is so half of what we pay monthly goes to just those two things and then the rest of it's actually going to our loan and paying down our home so just kind of give you an idea although prices are lower there are other things that come into play for your home and what it costs to live in in a nice home here in Houston so you know that's probably the biggest subject I think after this these other topics are going to be a little bit quicker but that's probably the most important thing to me because this is going to affect your monthly note and your actual housing expense so you know, from there, we can get into, you know, we can talk about gas. You know, again, this is January 2023. Right now, yesterday I saw gas, I believe it was about 249 right here by my house. Again, we live in Kingwood, but, you know, we moved in 2018. It was around that same price back then. You know, things kind of got crazy last year. Things went up. I think it almost hit $4 a gallon and then came right back down to just around 250 which is what we're seeing right now so if you're someone that's commuting to work and you're from a state where gas is historically expensive that's going to be a big savings for you coming here gas is a lot cheaper here than it is elsewhere so uh, keep that in mind getting into utilities you know obviously utilities are going to depend on your home, you know, how big or small your home is. If you have a newer home that's more energy efficient, if you have an older home that's not. Um, just in general, again, I can speak to me and people that live in Kingwood that I know, you know, these homes here in Kingwood are bigger. Um, most of them are gonna be over 3,000 square feet, high 2000s um, in summertime. Again, remember, it's hot here and most of these homes have two AC units. You're gonna have an AC unit for downstairs and an AC unit for upstairs and during summer they're pretty much running 24 7 so I can tell you from my experience I pay 11 cents per kilowatt hour whatever that means <laughs> um, but that's what I pay and during summertime our electricity bill is usually around like four or five hundred dollars and then keep in mind I also have a pool so I have two pool pumps that I'm running for 12 hours a day on that same unit um, and then I also have an AC unit on my garage because we have a, a home gym in the garage. So you're talking about basically three AC units, two pool pumps, plus, you know, living in the home with lights and charging things and all that stuff. And we're, you know, right around there, I'd say closer to 500 a month. Um, going into, you know, what's next? We can talk about <clears throat> gas. So my gas service is $80 a month. What, what we actually do, which is great, and um, with utility services, actually I'll talk about it when I was talking about electricity, there is a million different electricity companies here that are all fighting for your business, which is actually great because it curbs those prices. You know, growing up in LA, 
we had Southern California Edison. That was your only choice, and you were locked in to whatever they decided they wanted to do and how much they were going to charge you. Same thing when I lived in South Orange County. We had um, San Diego something or other. I don't remember, but same thing. That was your only option. So they can do whatever they want, charge you whatever they want. It's not that way here in Houston. There's multiple companies that are all fighting for your business. So you can get really good rates um, for electricity and for gas as well. So for gas, what we do, you know, obviously it does get cold here during the winter time and you use more gas during those colder months compared to the summer where you're hardly using any gas at all. So what we do, the first year we were here, our gas bill went up quite a bit during those winter months and it was up in the 200s so what i ended up doing with our company is they'll actually just average out your consumption over the year and then charge you a flat rate every month so we pay 80 dollars a month every single month and i'm more comfortable with that rather than paying you know 20 during summer and then 200 <laughs> during winter i'm just like hey that flat 80 that's what we do every month for the whole year so that's gas um water Again, water is going to depend on your property. If you live in a townhome, you're going to have less water consumption than someone that lives on a big property that has multiple sprinkler systems or a pool or things like that. So again, from my experience, as I mentioned, I have a pool. Our lot on our home is about 12,000 square feet, it's about a quarter acre. Um, so we're watering the grass during summer. Off season, like right now, it's cold. I don't even run the sprinklers right now. So my water bill for a family of four, right around a hundred bucks a month, you know, and again, I do have a pool, so I'm filling up the pool every now and then, um, but that's it. It's not terrible, not too bad. During summertime, when we're watering a lot, filling the pool up a lot, cause it's so hot, I'm filling the pool up almost weekly. Um, that water bill can get up into the 400s. And so we gotta kinda keep an eye on how much we're consuming water um, during those summer months. Um, after water, you know, basic home stuff. Um, you're talking about, you know, internet and cable. We don't have cable, we stream everything. So, you know, wherever you are, you probably have the same streaming services that we do. We have YouTube TV, which I think is like 60 bucks a month. And then our internet provider, we have a company called Takis. Um, and I believe we pay like 90 bucks a month for like a thousand MB, whatever is, it is, it's super fast. That's all I can say about it. I told him, just give me the fastest thing you got. Cause you know, we're streaming everything on the TV. I'm doing videos like this and I'm using my computer a lot and it's 90 bucks a month for their fastest service, which is great service I will add to. So, you know, other than the housing expense, you know, one thing that we noticed too, when we moved here, um, groceries were a lot cheaper here, are a lot cheaper here than they were in Southern California where, where we lived. And kind of one story to that is when we first moved here back in 2018, you know, we had to restock our entire home. We didn't have any food or anything. We got here, we went to the store. We had two carts, you know, it's me and my wife and our two kids. We had two carts full of stuff. And I'm sitting there looking at this stuff like, oh man, this is about to be like a thousand dollars, you know, dropping all this money on this food to you know, get food in our house. <laughs> um, so they start ringing everything up. We're staying there for a while. Um, and it comes back and I think it was like 500 and something dollars. And I was, me and my wife looked at each other and we were like, oh man, this is freaking awesome, right? Um, but that would have been easily a thousand dollars or more, you know, in Southern California. That was back in 2018. I'm sure it's worse now. Um, you know, things have gotten a little bit more expensive here since then. So now we go to the grocery store, we have weekly trips to the grocery store. So for me, my wife, our two kids and their lunches and everything for the week, we're usually spending around two to 300 bucks um, a week, closer to two, 250, 300 if we're buying more than we usually do, or we gotta get dog food or cat food or something like that. But for the most part, a couple hundred bucks a week is what we spend on groceries for a family of four kind of to speak to nightlife and things that we do you know my wife and i we've been together for a long time we've been together since high school so you know we like to go out and have fun together so we go downtown we go to bars we do a lot and and nightlife is kind of important to us and spending those quality times those moments together is important to us so one thing to speak to also is going out to restaurants and drinks and things of that nature when you're out kind of just for your entertainment nights or just having fun kind of nights. And I will say food 
and entertainment is much less expensive here than it was in California as well. Um, so, you know, we go out for like a nice dinner and drinks and stuff. It's usually under a hundred bucks, maybe $80 or so. If we go somewhere really nice, um, maybe 150 to 200, but overall drinks, you know, you go to a bar, there's a lot of bars here where you're getting drinks for maybe five to eight bucks a piece. Beers are maybe five dollars. You know, if you're going to nicer, more upscale places, that's where you kind of get into the 10 to $15 range per drink, which from my experience, <clears throat> being from California, you were 10, 15 bucks for even like one of the cheaper places. So, so kind of just a good side note thing, not really anything crazy, but you know, my wife and I do enjoy that. So I wanted to throw that in there and let you know it is a little bit less expensive for your date nights and outings of, of things of that sort as well. You know, other than that, I hope I didn't forget anything, but if you can think of anything else or you have any other questions about things, um, the cost of living here in Kingwood or something that's crossing your mind that maybe didn't cross my mind, um, you can put them in the comments. I'll answer the comments below, or you can reach out to me. That number below is my direct line. You can schedule a Zoom call with me as well. If you just, you know, if you're thinking about moving here next week, two weeks from now, a month from now, a year from now, whatever it is, uh, reach out to me. I'd love to connect with you. I'm an open book. As you can see, I just basically told you all of my housing expenses, um, you know, and everything we're doing here. But, you know, I'm trying to provide you with as much value as I can and as much openness and honesty as I can to give you a real world idea from someone that moved here from California myself um, and try to help you out and give you an understanding of things that you might not be able to, to know from California until you're here. So, you know, go ahead and reach out to me. Love talking to y'all. Other than that, I hope I was able to give you some good value in this video. I appreciate y'all. God bless. I'll see you on the next one.